All right. This presentation aims at giving the audience a synopsis of our entire project, which was the development of effective self-archiving software tools. Without further ado, I'll go straight into the presentation. The practice of self-archiving in institutional repositories is a major means of storing and making scholarly work available to various scholar communities. However, the research recently conducted by my team shows records of low uptake of digital content to the UNSA IR. As a team, under the supervision of Dr. Lighton Piri, we were tasked with finding out why there has been low uptake of digital content into the UNSA IR. The proposed solution that we came up with was the development of third-party self-archiving software tools designed to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of the self-archiving practice. I will leave the floor for Victor, who will go further into the findings of the project. Right, so taking up from my colleague, today I'm going to talk about the actual implementation of the software archiving to show some functionalities and how this functionality can help increase the content uptake in the institutional repositories at the University of Zambia. Uh, this application is a uh, a web-based application, which means a person has to have a gadget device to use to access this um, application, all right? Uh, this application was implemented uh, by the help of uh, Minster technology, which is like framework which is used to develop uh, uh, web applications, okay? And uh, the, this application as well was um, controlled or guided or, you know, stored in a, in, in a way that uh, the source code can be, you know, uh, accessed by everyone using GitHub. Okay. With this information, I'm going to pass it to my next um, presenter. <clears throat> Under end user interface, we have the home page, which consists of the login and the register. And we also have the deposit content page, which has the where you have to upload content. And then we also have the approval page. Under sign up, this is where you sign in. You There is a form where you sign in, and then when you sign in, it's going to take you to the login page. The login page is for users who are already familiar with the, with the we who have already signed in, so they just log in and put in their email and their password. And then that takes us to the upload page the upload page this is where you choose a file where which you are going to upload and then when you upload it's going to to show a form under this form this is where you fill in the metadata of the of the file that you have uploaded and then there is a submission page after you submit it brings you a list of forms of uploads where you can view, edit, delete, and then after that, you can also view individual users where you're able to see the metadata that you had put in after you have uploaded. And then you can also edit the page. There's also a, uh, an interface for editing where you can change in case of anything, the metadata that you have uploaded. So from here, I'm going to pass it on to my next colleague. Continuing from where my colleague left off from, our first objective was to quantify the uptake of institutional repository content in the University of Zambia Institutional Repository. In our findings, were that the UNSA repository holds about 6,700 documents. And these documents were deposited by the different schools that are divided into departments at the University of Zambia. And in order for us to quantify the uptake of institutional repository content, we were required to extract the information or the content from the institutional repository using the OAI PMH protocol, which is the Open Archives Initiative protocol for metadata harvesting. The content that was extracted was in an XML format and it had to be processed in order for us to understand it. The processing of the XML content was done using the Python programming language and the output was converted to a comma separated values file which is a csv file the csv file was then uploaded to google sheets where we used uh, google sheets in order for us to come up with our data visualizations in the form of bar graphs and pie charts so looking at this section here this section is showing us the results 
the results of the deposited content in the Unza repository per school. So looking at this here, we can see that the School of Education is the one that practices self-archiving more as compared to the other schools that are there at the University of Zambia. This section here talks about the departments within the School of Education that practice self-archiving. And from this, the figure here at the right, we can see that the, depart the Department of Language and Social Studies is the one that practices self-archiving the most, followed by the Department of Education, Library Information Science, and the last one is the Department of Primary Education. This section here talks about the types of publications that we found in the institutional repository at the University of Zambia. And looking at the pie chart here at our right, we can see that the articles are the ones that are deposited more compared to the books, the book chapters, recordings, as well as the thesis. This section here talks about the year of publication. Uh, of the trends in which the digital content was uploaded to the ONZA repository. And we can see that from 2000 to 2008, there was a low uptick of institutional repository content, but beginning from uh, 2010 going onwards until 2020, we can see that there was an increase in the uptick of institutional repository content. And I will let my colleague take it up from here. Okay, thank you. So after conducting an interview with the publishing team at the University of Zambia, it was noted that the current process of uploading content at UNSA IRA is tedious. Hence, it takes a long time for them to upload content. Otherwise, the library has quality guidelines that, has to fo that one has to follow when uploading content. Most people tend to make mistakes. No wonder they uh, take a long time when uploading content. So for our tool, which is UNZASAT, we, uh, we evaluated it using the technology acceptance model, which is also known as TAM, for us to determine the usability of this software. Otherwise, we also conducted an experiment. Uh, this experiment, we expected participants to interact with application A and B. So after our participant, uh, interacted with application A and B, they discovered that one of the applications took a long time for them to upload content and the other application took less time to upload content. After that, they also noticed that this application which took time for them to upload content was the uh, Dispace, was, was on the Dispace and the other application was on the SAT. Otherwise, these were the responses that we got from our participants. Measuring the effectiveness, we also considered the number of participants who found the application easy to use. And we also considered the number of participants who found the application to be useful. We also find out the number of participants who found the application or who, who thought the application, learning to use the application was easy. The other point is that uh, the number of participants who thought that the system will improve the job, uh, their job performance. Otherwise, this is what we got from measuring the effectiveness of our tool. Hence, UNZASAT is one of the application that has proved to be effective and easy to use. I'll take it up to my next colleague. All right. Just to conclude. The team and I would say self-archiving is a practice that if properly understood and practiced would make the lives of many scholars easy. It would make the work they want to make known to people easily accessible and available to the world. Therefore, its influence on the scholar communication process cannot be overemphasized. Thank you.